So friends, I am at the intersection of Poplar and Mendenhall, and something incredible happened here in 1956. Let's back up and look. Elvis appeared on the Milton Berle show for the second time and sang Hound Dog. This is a picture from that performance. And he gyrated and moved around so much that on July the 1st, 1956, when he was on the Steve Allen show, Steve had him wear a tuxedo and had him sing to an actual hound dog, which was embarrassing to Elvis. And Elvis even said years later that he wished he hadn't done it. But you know what? I think that it probably made him more famous because it's one of those deals where there's no such thing as bad publicity, and it got a lot of publicity. So I think it was a good thing. He sang Hound Dog and Don't Be Cruel that night, and the joke ended up being really on Steve Allen because later he never appeared on the Steve Allen show again, and he ended up on the Ed Sullivan show and got big money, $50,000 for three shows which was because he became a superstar during that time. And he had a 27-hour train ride back to Memphis. He had a concert on July the 4th, the night of July the 4th, at Russwood Park, which was actually a fundraiser. We're going to talk about when he arrived at this little intersection right here. And there's photographs of him getting off the train. And he actually walked right across in that area right there. This road was not here, by the way, if you'll see from the overheads, as we'll talk about later. I'll show you the uh, overhead shots. But this is the intersection that happened at. This road was not here at that time. But he got off and walked from the train. And the photographer happened to be on the train, took shots of him. And they're iconic. A lot of people have tried to figure out where this happened at. I did a lot of research myself. And there's the eye bank that's there now. And Priscilla actually had a wedding shower up at the top of the eye bank. So this is the little intersection, and I'm going to prove to you that it happened indeed at this intersection right here. I'm going to show you Belmont Grill, which was called by a different name at the time, and the Town & Country Barbershop was right there. In this photograph, you'll see the Town & Country Barbershop over his head. That was right there where the First Tennessee Bank is. You'll see the gas station. That right there is Mendenhall Road, which is directly across the street right there. And it's been widened, and they removed the gas station that is right there. So where those vehicles are sitting, where that white car just came through, is where that gas station would have been. Where the tree is obscuring is actually that restaurant, that grill right there that you see. I'm going to show you another close-up picture, and you'll be able to see the edge of the roof of that grill right there. So if you look in this photograph, you see to the left of the gas station, up top you'll see where the white with the little edges on it drops down. So this is a close-up or closer-up of Belmont Grill, and you see that little drop-down just to the right of the stoplight above the awnings. That is in that picture. And you'll be able to see it in the old picture to the left of the top left of the gas station right there. So he asked that lady for directions and walked that way towards Audubon. And we're going to talk about the rest of the story. Stay tuned. So after standing here and really studying the picture as opposed to where we're at, I believe it happened further over here at this angle so the tree could obscure the restaurant. And I am going to hold the picture up and show you the angle right here so you can see the tree. So that is the picture right there. And if you'll notice to the left, that tree right there is obscuring the edge of the grill. The gas station was right there where I'm pointing and Town & Country Barbershop was right there. And the road right there was Mendenhall, but it was a two lane at the time. So let's go over across the street and look at Belmont Grill and the building next to it. There's something unusual about these two buildings that you can actually see from the air. And I'm gonna be able to use their shape to prove this is in fact the intersection. So I'm getting ready to turn right here, and right there is where the gas station would have been. And we're trying to line up these poles. It's possible that telephone pole is in the picture, or even this short one right here. But you got to consider that was 62 years ago. That was a long time ago. A lot of things change. But luckily, these two buildings are still here, and I'm going to show you where they line up. But we're going to stop and look at those two buildings, and I'm going to show you uh, as I mentioned, something very odd about both of these buildings that's going to prove that this is indeed the spot. Okay, so we're at the buildings across the street, and I'm going to walk up and show you something very interesting about these two buildings that make them very unique. If you look closely at the building, you will notice that it is not straight. The bricks are straight right here, but the building is skewed to the left. They are parallelograms. The fronts are straight front and back together, the sides are not straight. 
So both of them are at an angle off to the left-hand side. They're both skewed to the left, including the Belmont grill. If you look down there, you see they're both very much turned to the left-hand side. And you can actually see this from the air in the overheads. This particular overhead that I'm getting ready to show is 1956. And you'll notice that you can see them both skewed to the left and the gas station is still there on the corner. That's before Mendenhall was widened. The gas station would have been right here. And the town and country would have been there. Elvis would have got off the train over there on that side and would have walked right down that sidewalk heading to Audubon. All the way to Audubon, friends, he actually walked. What if he had a cell phone? Somebody could have come and picked him up. So friends, first let's establish where we're at. If you see this intersection, the South Mendenhall Road was not there when Elvis got off. And I'll show you the overhead picture here in just a moment. And you'll see that there's no road right there through the field south. And you can actually still see see the tree that he walked by. I'm going to zoom in on the tree. So you can see right there, that is the tree that was obscuring the restaurant at the time. And it's been a restaurant this whole time. And you can see to the left of the intersection, those two buildings are still there. And they're showing that they're a parallelogram. You can see that they're kind of at a little bit of an angle, not real good. And over to the far right, you see the iBank Tower. So that kind of gives you perspective of where you're at. Now, this is Poplar at the crossroad of South Mendenhall. You see to the left of, of Mendenhall is Joseph Bianchi's gas station, which was 4972, which is now gone. Louis Grill, which is now Belmont Grill, is 4972. And then 4966 at that time was Adler's department store. Now look on the other side of Mendenhall, you see Duke and Fowler Auto Garage repair. Now in the next excerpt from the phone book, I'm going to show you that a lot of things changed in a very short period of time. The excerpt that you saw before was 1954. This excerpt is from 1959. The issue is, is a lot of the main 57, 58, 56, 55 are all missing from the archives. So Sometime between the time that Elvis went by this in 1956 and 1959, the gas station disappeared, the car repair shop went away, and the barber shop moved from down the street, which was at a beauty shop, into the building that the auto repair shop was in. The Adler's department store became vacant. So a lot of things happened between 56 and 59 when the 59 book came out, which would have been in 58. So during that two or three year period, all these things changed, and I would assume that that's when they widened Mendenhall Road, and they also went straight across, as you can see in this overhead. So the gas station is gone. This particular overhead had to happen later because this is 1963 because now you see that Town & Country Barbershop building is missing on the right hand corner. So that last overhead was 1963. This is 2018 or 2017. You could see that the building that was built in 1963 where they tore down Town & Country with the parking lot, the parking lot and the building is all still there. It's a First Tennessee Bank now. Belmont Grill is still there and it's Memphis Home Theater is in the old Adler department store. They've got a tobacco store on the other corner that I actually walked in and he said that Elvis never did business there because he did business with the tobacco store in Whitehaven. But Jerry Lee Lewis did business here even today, modern day. He's actually come in there recently when I talked to that gentleman. So this is what that intersection looks like now. And you can see they've widened Poplar. Mendenhall is very wide and it goes through. It's quite a busy intersection right there. The I-Bank and all that is to the right. And this is East Memphis, kind of an fluent area. Dr. Nick lives real close to here. Red West live close to here, as well as George Klein. The graveyard that Red and Dr. Nick and Sam Phillips and all of them are in is real close to here. And Sam actually lived on Mendenhall Road until he passed away. After he made a lot of money, he actually lived there until he passed away. So a lot of things are right around in here. All right, so I've got this set to go from where we're at right here on at South Mendenhall and Poplar. You can see it's at the intersection. It is 2.2 miles or six minutes driving time from here. So let's retrace those steps, friends, so we can see what Elvis did. Now, the story is that he went down this road right here and crossed over through a field. So let's see if we can find that field. And he also didn't know which way home. He asked somebody. We're going to check it out. Stay tuned. And I can see the field over there. So I'm gonna stay straight. Where that green is right there, 
It's a park now, but I believe that is the field that he walked across. He definitely would not have gone by the target, I can tell you that. So friends, I stopped to send the glory up and you can see that just at the very moment that I stop, it starts sprinkling, which is an issue. The glory is not waterproof and I don't have a GU, which is a glory umbrella in the truck. I've got one on order. So clearly this is not the exact path. Nobody really knows the exact path, but he walked down Poplar, crossed over, walked through the park, which I couldn't get the blue line to go through the park diagonally in the Audubon. I can't stand the rain on my window. Oh, I believe he crossed over right there, friends, right here to Audubon. And he came down this street, down this sidewalk, when it was speed bumpless. At one time, Audubon was speed bumpless. Uh, I don't know if you see the irony of speed bumps on the Audubon. I do. And then he arrived right here at home. Now, if he'd have had a cell phone, he could have called somebody to come pick him up. But he arrived right there, indeed, he did. Back then, these trees were saplings. So friends, last but not least, this was an incredible day. I'm thankful that I was able to figure this out, but we finally got it. This is definitely where it happened at. This night, he did a concert at Russwood Park, and that'll be another story later. I've actually filmed a lot of that, but be looking for that story to come up soon. I just think this was an incredible day of Elvis becoming famous during this year and getting off the train and walking home before cell phones. While traveling on Southern Railway, Elvis stopped off and got some chicken and some snack cakes and noticed not one person's even looking at him. You see his cousin Gene Smith behind him, but this was pre-Memphis Mafia, pre-Entourage. This was when Elvis was still just a regular guy on his way up. You can see the future is bright in his face. Thanks so much for watching and tighten up every chance you get. Elvis tightened up and walked home, friends, on this day, July the 4th, 1956. Exactly two years to the day that he auditioned for Scotty Moore in his apartment. And if you're new to this channel, Adventures of the Spy Guy, I have more than 600 Elvis videos. And don't forget to check out my sidekick, Globetrotting with Trey. He has over 150. And we both focus on true Elvis stories and what really happened. So if you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. That helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.